Hey guys, Plasma is now finally out in early access, and ever since the beta went away last year, I've wanted to build one thing. This is of course a fully reloadable railgun, which I thought I could do using these magnet blocks. Starting out though, I flew over to this nice grassy area and put down a cube. And after I did that, you can see here I stretched it into this long bar and put down another platform below it. Now what I'm trying to build here is sort of a channel, and you can see kind of what I got going on now. Inside that channel, I wanted to put down my magnet, and I'm also going to have my bolt go in there so it can fly out the other side. Now, of course, initially, I thought that I could just completely fill this with magnets and that that would generate me the maximum amount of power. After I have those in place here, though, you can see I also started moving some stuff around to get it to fit a little bit better. But now, finally with this, you can see I'm putting down another cube, and this time I'm putting a magnet on the front of it. First, though, I turned down the friction of both the platform and the cube, and once I had that, I wanted to give it a test. This didn't really go according to plan, though, and you see it kind of just flew out the back. Now I also tried putting the cube in the center of all these magnets and you can see it's not really moving all that much. Now I knew I was going to need some system to turn off some of the magnets to keep it pulling forward and in order to do that here I wanted to start out with an even simpler design. This is pretty much exactly what I had before but you can see now it's a lot shorter. This is going to make it a lot easier for me to fit in just a few magnets and with these I should be able to get a pretty quick test. And with all these placed in here, you can see I put down another cube and I stretched it again and put a magnet on the front of it. Now after that, I stretched apart the channel a bit more to fit that magnet and now I'm adding in a controller. This time you can see I'm adding the magnet nodes on here and my plan is to turn them off sequentially to keep pulling the bolt forward. To get this to work though, I'm gonna need to know the position of the bolt and to do that, I'm gonna use these distance sensors. You can see I'm putting them on top of these magnets here and once I got these in place, I also added on some LCDs here to show the distance that they're reading. Now I also shrunk these down to clear the magnets a bit easier and you can see now just putting a cube on top of these as I move this back and forth the numbers on top of those distance sensors are changing to show the distance that they're reading. Now if I feed that distance into a number comparator I'll be able to determine whether or not the bolt is in front of that magnet and if it should be on. You can see the first LCD here I have it reading false and true and that tells me if there's something blocking its way. Once I had this though I could pretty much just hook it up to all of the magnets and I just had to add in two more number comparators for the other two distance sensors. Now you can see in this test, as I move this cube up, it's switching the polarity of the magnet, and that means that as the bolt is going to push in front of that magnet, the polarity is going to switch, and it's going to start pushing it forward rather than pulling it in. This though wasn't exactly perfect, and it seemed like the magnet really wanted to rotate to face the direction of the other ones. Now this just meant that it really didn't want to slide perfectly in between this channel, so what I did here is I added on two more cubes, and you can see now they're forcing the bolt to stay straight. Now finally after doing this, I had the bolt shooting forward, but it wasn't really all that fast. At the very least though, it was consistently moving, so I figured this would be a pretty good start here. Now the reloading process also was a little obtuse here, but I was actually able to get it somewhat consistent, and this at least was a good start. Now I figured that with a new design here, I could change things up just a little bit to get a much better result. Now you can see what I'm doing is putting down two cubes again to form that channel, but instead of putting the magnets on the inside of the channel, I'm putting them on the front. What this is going to let me do is pull the magnet in directly on its face instead of off by 90 degrees. That should give me a lot more power, and you can see now after putting in a couple of channels here, I increased the range of these magnets and also their power. Eventually here, you can see I sort of made this tunnel-like thing, and it was actually able to pull in the bolt here, and you can see it starts to come out the other side. It wasn't going super fast, that was mainly because I turned down the magnet strength a lot, but I figured that if I added a lot more magnets, I should get more power. This kind of seemed to be true, but it also seemed to be catching up the bolt a lot here, and it wasn't really allowing it to shoot out the front. Now you can see next to them doing is shrinking down the platform. That condenses these magnets a lot more, and I was hoping once I did this, I'd be able to add in some walls and really accelerate the bolt at the very end. Now you can see me dropping that in here now, and trying to shoot it, it actually wasn't too bad. It did throw it forward. Now getting rid of that random panel at the end there, trying this again, it still seemed to work pretty well, and this was better than I'd ever seen before. But I was thinking now though, 
if I add on the controller, I should be able to turn off the magnets and really get this to be consistent. Now I also moved the magnets closer to the ground here, and after doing that, I also added on a distance sensor on top of the magnets. Now trying this out here, I also added on this button, and you can see I am able to launch it out from the front, but as soon as I hit this distance sensor, very often I end up just stopping. This was a common problem, and I really was hoping the distance sensor was going to end up solving that. In fact here, I could see that really the only way I end up exiting the barrel is if I accidentally bounce out from the bottom and get ejected really high. This was at least very close to working, and I was able to get some really good shots off here, but since it's so inconsistent, I knew I was going to need to improve things a little bit more. That's when I got the idea to use a single line of magnets on the bottom here, and you can see here I'm putting in the bolt. Tested this out here, I was able to eject it, but I was thinking now, if I put on another block like this, I should be able to put on another magnet facing down that gets pulled in. This actually did seem to work pretty well here, and there's clearly a lot of force attracting it. Now, assuming I could turn off the magnets at the right time, this should work well. I did also realize, though, instead of having the magnets on the bottom, I can still have them on the side wall, but now on the bolt, what I want to do is have the magnets facing out. You can see me putting those down here, and this, I should be able to keep attracting the magnet in front of me and slowly move my way forward. Trying this out right away was a little sketchy, and I wasn't exactly happy with that, but I thought if I added on some rails here, I should be able to control it. This was a little bit better, but it was still pretty chaotic, so I tried making it even bigger, and now I could see that I was getting some nice smooth motion. Now, I added on a transmitter here, and also a distance sensor on the back, and that's gonna let me figure out the bolt's distance from the back, and therefore let me figure out which magnets I need to turn on. This almost was working perfectly, but I noticed this sometimes is getting caught on the very back here. This wasn't too big of a deal, though, and I figured the force the magnets should be able to pull that straight through that opening. And I also put on a controller here, and I'm using that controller to continuously send that distance sensor data out to the rest of the machine. Now, I also added on an LCD here, and you can see I'm able to read out that distance sensor data, and with that number, just like before, I'll be able to figure out which magnets I need to turn on. Now, you can see here me implementing that now, and trying this out on the very last magnet here, as I pass it, it turns on. This was close to what I wanted, but it was actually the opposite, so I just flipped that around, and you can see now I am able to throw it out of the barrel and slowly move out. This didn't look super impressive, and turning this up now, things were looking quite a bit better. That was my best launch I'd seen yet, and I added on another number comparator for the second set of magnets. And with this, there's some pretty good amount of force pulling that out. I also lowered the mass of the projectile, and this improved things a lot more as well. Now, seeing these improvements, I wanted to add on all the other number comparators and also the other magnets. And you can see now, as I move the bolt forward, how it turns off all the magnets in sequence, and this actually didn't seem to be too much better. I realized though that distance sensor added on before might be causing some problems, so I moved it off of the bolt to create less friction, and trying this out, it did seem to be a little bit better now. And this launch actually was so good, I managed to throw it outside of the map. Now, also to get a bit more power, you can see here what I'm doing is changing the logic, so instead of turning off the magnet, it switches the polarity once I pass it. That means that not only will I be holding the bolt forward, I'll be pushing it, and you can clearly see with this we got quite a bit more power. That was a great sign, and just to wrap things up here, I had it on a second magnet on the bolt, and I wanted to see if this would get me any more power. Clearly this was working pretty well, and now I had something that was shooting at a speed I was pretty happy with. This was exactly what I wanted to see, and next up, I wanted to start working on the reloading mechanism. Now you saw I added in those walls there, and I also added in this piston. With this, you see I'm able to catch part of that magnet magnet, and if I add this to the other side and the back, I'll be able to suspend my bolt in place and then drop it into the barrel whenever I want to. This is going to be great for loading in multiple bolts because I'll be able to continuously drop them down one stage to keep loading in more to the barrel. And you can see, as I press this button, how all of the pistons open up, and now loading the bolt, I wanted to give this a try. Now with this in place here, you can see I end up hitting the button and it drops it straight down, and that was working perfectly. And for more bolts, pretty much all you need to do is add Add on more pistons. Now you can see I'm adding on a bunch more of these in place, both in the front and the back, and after that, now I just wanted a way to hold in the bolts to keep them from sliding forward. To do this, I added on a rail to the front here, and you can see after that, I'm extending out this wall. This means that as I load in the bolts now, you can see they're not able to slide forward into the barrel area. And now you can see, as I press the button, I'm also able to drop this down one stage at a time, and I should be able to get multiple bolts loaded in here. Once I get this to the bottom, 
bottom, you can see it hit the switch and it launched it forward at a pretty good speed. That was pretty much exactly what I was looking for. And next, what I wanted to do here was stack on more area to hold bolts. Once I had this, it took a little while to program all the pistons right, but with this, I am able to keep hitting the button and dropping down the bolt one stage at a time. This was working quite well and nothing seemed to be catching up and trying to launch these off, they did seem to go pretty well. So at this point, I just wanted to load on a bunch of these and see what I could do. After I had that first one in there, I tried loading it a second, but it seemed like the magnets on it were interfering with the first bolt. To solve that, I just had to load it in a little bit more carefully here and you can see now, nothing seems to be acting oddly. Now though, I'm able to drop it in again and after that, I loaded in all of the bolts that I could. Now for my first test here, I turned on the magnets to shoot forward and you can see as I dropped the bolt forward, it kind of acted oddly. It clipped right through the device and after that, it shot into the ground. From that point on, I made sure to drop the bolt first before turning on the magnets and this seemed to have a much better effect. With this though, I had my manual loading system working pretty well and I just wanted to add in a timer to fully automate this process. You can see once I got that in place now, which pretty much had a tie into the rest of the system and I made sure to add in this LED to show the rate at which it's firing. Now, I also moved that second button further down and this is to reset the mechanism so I'm able to stop it from firing. This was actually working pretty well here and you can see now I'm able to get five shots off fully automatically and they all went in generally the right direction. But now with the gun mostly working, I wanted to try putting it on a car. For that, I put a servo on the bottom and you can see I put another servo on that. These are gonna let me tilt side to side and up and down so I'm able to aim wherever I want. Now you can see here, I got those on knobs and this actually did seem to be working pretty well. So I threw this on the ground and with this, it still seemed to be holding itself up pretty well and you can see while it is a little wobbly, I am able to pretty effectively aim. With this, I want to add on the wheels here and finish up the rest of this device. Now for steering, I am going to need to use this hinge, but once I got that in place there, I was able to put on these wheels and you can see I also put on this docking station. This is going to let me pilot the device and once I got that node in place here, I just made sure to attach up all the forward, reverse, left and right controls and then also spacebar to shoot the gun. And while it was a little slow, everything seemed to be holding together pretty well here and I wanted to try giving this a quick test. Now, I also bound a couple of special actions to tilt the gun around, and you can see here, entirely while piloting the device, I am able to move this around. Now, I came off of it here, just to show the gun shooting a bit more clearly, and you can see now, while it's tilted, I am able to fire a shot, and it doesn't seem to oscillate around too much. That was pretty much what I was looking for, and I wanted to see now if I could fire off multiple shots without having too much trouble. Now, starting out here, I got my first shot to actually work out pretty well, and you can see after moving a little bit, I tried to fire a second shot. This seemed to load up fine, but this next shot here had a bit more trouble. Fortunately, it did seem to correct itself, and you can see this last shot is able to shoot over the mount. But now with the controls pretty much wrapped up, what I wanted to do is add in a few more wheels to make it look a bit more like a tank, and try shooting at some warehouses. Now fortunately, you can just place a massive warehouse in this game, and after getting that in place here, I stacked a few on each other and set their mass to be really low. Now I figured that should make it pretty easy to topple these over, and you can see now, I'm getting in the gun and trying to aim towards where I want. Once I get something roughly towards the top of the warehouse, I fire this off and you can see now I'm able to throw this back. You'll also notice I did add a little smoke effect to the front when it shoots. It kind of obscures what's going on, but I also think it does look kind of cool. With the second shot though, I pretty easily topple over that warehouse and you can see after that, I try to aim down and shoot right at the base. Surprisingly, this gun's actually fairly accurate here and as long as it's not wobbling around too much, I was able to get a pretty good shot off on the bottom. Now, one thing I wanted to improve on with this was the speed, and I think that if I ever do a future tank build, I'll try to do a variation of this that could shoot a lot faster. At the very least, though, I am pretty happy to see that Plasma's finally in early access now, and I'm excited to try making some other stuff in it. But guys, if you have any more ideas for things I should make in Plasma, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. And make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and otherwise, till next time.